Even if you can barely hear your alarm clock or limp down the stairs to the kitchen, birding can offer immense joy and satisfaction, perhaps the most you will experience in your later decades. I know because it has done this for me, even though I waited until my mid-fifties to seriously pick up a pair of binoculars. For most of my life, I, like many of you, clung to the mantra, birding is something I'll do later. I would have waited even longer, except that I was blessed with a son who embraced serious avian interests when only ten years old. At first, Braden and I simply tried to figure out what was flitting around the yard, but we quickly began going out on hikes and visiting wildlife refuges to see what we might discover. We were greatly inspired by the hilarious movie The Big Year, starring three of our favorite actors, Steve Martin, Owen Wilson, and Jack Black, and we decided to embark on our own big year adventure, seeing how many species we could rack up in the U.S. and Canada in a single calendar year. It was one of the best decisions we ever made. Not only did we have countless adventures and make lifelong memories, we accumulated a college degree's worth of birding skills and knowledge in a single 12-month span. Unfortunately, the following year, disaster struck. Up until then, my sensory systems had functioned fairly well. Sure, I had suffered moderate tinnitus, or ringing of the ears, since my early twenties, but that didn't seem to impact my ability to hear birdsong. However, the summer after our big year, Braden, his birding buddy Nick, and I were all visiting Bedoin National Wildlife Refuge in eastern Montana. I had pulled over our intrepid minivan so that we could listen at one of the marshy locations around the lake, when Nick shouted, Sedge Wren! I hear it! Braden joined in. I had my window rolled down on the correct side of the car, and I didn't hear a thing. At first I thought I'd just missed it. I was the driver, after all, and had other duties to attend to. But when the wren sang again and again, my ears didn't register the tiniest blip. Over the next few months, I realized that I was missing more and more bird calls, especially in the high frequencies. I tried to tell myself that maybe I had too much earwax build up, but after getting my ears cleaned, a growing, sinking realization settled in my gut. My ears were shot. Looking back, there had been warning signs, from my wife's mumbling, to the fact that my stereo didn't sound as sharp and crisp as I remembered. It wasn't until I had trouble hearing the entire call of a chickadee, however, that the full impact of my loss slammed into me. I took it badly. I shook my fists at the hearing gods. I cursed my late father for taking me out to shoot shotguns without ear protection. I lamented long evenings listening to the live version of the Rolling Stones' Midnight Rambler through headphones with the volume cranked up. Finally, I got fitted with a pair of hearing aids. <laughs>